Wednesday, December 8th. I want to welcome you all to this uh, morning's committee meeting. Uh, I'm joined by uh, my dear friend and colleague, Richard Alicon. And uh, at this point, we do not have a quorum, so we'll just proceed. Any action that's taken, Mr. City Attorney, will be deemed uh, communicate from the chair. Uh, I've got uh, several public comment cards, and I think uh, I will begin by taking the public comment. Thelmy Perez, Steve Diaz, Davin, Corona Davin? Okay. And let's see, how many chairs do we have up there? Four. Oh. You got some more in the background. Uh, Alma Sacito. Yeah, uh, we're for agenda item five, though, Councilman. Oh, you, I thought you guys were. We're public uh, There's a couple of public comment ones, but we also want to. <laughs> okay, we can do that. Okay, so. So, we'll so, five. so why don't we. So that means I just have Thelmy and Steve for public comment? Yep. Okay. It's your lucky day. Okay. <laughs> All right, go go right ahead. Um, so good morning, Housing Committee. My name is Steve Diaz, and I'm with the LA Right to Housing Collective. We're here today before you once again on the date that the RSO reforms were supposed to be moving forward. Council Member Wesson, as the chair of this committee, we, we have staunch belief and expectations that you would show strong leadership in moving this moving these reforms forward. Yet all we continue to see is dates that continue to get postponed, but yet we continue to see is compromises being held in the back doors without the voices of tenant advocates and tenants taken into account. Um, we're here today because it was publicly announced over two months ago that there was going to be a hearing today where the RSO reforms were going to be moved forward. Yet once again, the agenda came forward, the date came forward, and yet there's nothing moving forward on the table. With puts us back in the same circumstances as early last year, come the beginning of the year, we're looking at people's rents about to be being raised again. Yet we have nothing on the table stating the reforms are going to be removing forward. We need you, we need leadership that's going to act on removing the floor, taking into account the jobs and committee's recommendations, and creating actual balance in the RSO to meet the original intent that it was meant. Looking forward, Council Member Wesson, we're expecting that we move this, we move this policy forward, taking into account that there is staunch support in Councilmatic District 10 for these reforms and removal of the floor. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Good Ms. morning. Perez. Good morning, committee and council members. Um, my name is Thelmy Perez, and I'm with the Los Angeles Right to Housing Collective. Um, I want to reiterate, well, not in words, but what Steve just said, but also over the last few months, just with the expectancy that today was going to be, um, there was going to be a vote on uh, RSO reform, we hit the streets in a lot of your districts. Uh, you may have seen us there. Um, but we hit the streets to talk to folks to find out if this is a pressing issue of housing and housing uh, reform and rent control reform is a pressing issue, issue to, your, to, your, to your folks in your district. Sorry, I couldn't tell if you were listening to me. Um, I just want to read real quickly to you a postcard that hundreds of tenants from across the city have signed, uh, so have signed and addressed to their council people. And it basically says, dear council member, we would like to inform you that during this lean holiday season, we want less turkey more housing, and rent stabilization reform that helps tenants. We don't want the free turkeys and toys that typically come with politicians during the holidays. Invest your resources in something that we can use for the long term, our homes. We insist that you vote to fix broken rent policies that currently benefit owners at the expense, at the expense of LA's renter majority. On December 8th, obviously we know this is not today, vote to, number one, eliminate guaranteed rent increases, number two, eliminate utility pass-throughs, and number three, ensure quality repairs in rental housing. So these are folks that actually wanted, it was very easy to get these signed because it is a really pressing issue to a lot of Angelinos, knowing that more than 60% of Angelinos are renters. Um, they're addressed to individual council members, but I'm going to present these in a stack to you, Mr. Wesson, and, um, and I'd also like for you to know that these are folks that wanted to be here on the 8th to hear what the vote was going to look like. They're not here, but this is a representation and this is their voice to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Can I respond or 
maybe answer a question? I know sometimes with public comments. Well, under the Brown Act, you're not supposed to generally get into a dialogue on things, but you could briefly respond or if you need any – have any questions for clarification, that's all right. Okay. If we had the vote today, you would lose. So you should appreciate that we are attempting to put something together that we can pass. So that's – that's all I can say on that, and we are very sensitive to your needs and your your concerns, the concerns of everyone. And then where it relates to uh, turkeys and toys, for some people, that is a, important as well. So with that said, we'll move on to uh, – huh? I'm going to give them too, and I'm sure there will be some people that will really appreciate that. All right, uh, item one. Item one, CRA and CAO, tr CAO reports relative to authority to negotiate and execute a sole source contract with CASA 0101 to disseminate redevelopment information in the Adelante East Side project area. Okay. Um, on item one, you want to identify yourself? I'm Donna DeBrule Hamer. I'm the project manager for the East Side Re Region, the Community Redevelopment Agency. All right, good. Well, I, you just got some exercise because what we're going to do is communicate from the chair. We'll adopt the CAO report on uh, this item. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Item two. CRA and CLA reports relative to authority to increase the budget in an amount not to exceed $48,000 from 205000 to 253000 for outside counsel legal services provided by Goldfarb and Lipman LLP related to the development of the NoHo Commons mixed-use project in the North Hollywood Redevelopment Project area. Okay, then on item two, we'll adopt the CLA report. That brings us to item three. Bureau of Engineering report relative to funding necessary for the implementation of the Los Angeles River Revitalization Master Plan during the next 10 years. On November 15, 2010, the Ad Hoc River Committee noted and filed this status report. Okay. On item three, we'll concur in the recommendations of the Ad Hoc uh, River Committee. That brings us to item four. Los Angeles Housing Department and CAO reports relative to authority to execute a contract with Paragon Partners LTD to provide tenant relocation assistance services to qualified displaced tenants and related actions. Okay, on that uh, item, we'll adopt the CAO report. I think we'll hold item five and just go to uh, item six. Item six, CRA report relative to a report back on the development status of all land acquisition fund projects. Okay, so on item six, uh, without objection, we'll re uh, receive and file the CRA report. All of these uh, actions will be deemed to communicate from the chair. That brings us to item five. If you could read item five, and then we will uh, call up the public speaker cards I have on item five. LHD report relative to a report back regarding properties under jurisdiction of the systematic code enforcement program. Okay. Uh, Davin, Alma Salcito, uh, Laura. Laura Quadros and Nohemi Armendarzi. Armendarz, I think she's on her way. So. Oh, okay, so you guys can. So can um, start, and then when she comes, we'll. Yeah, just tell me when to get started. I'll, I'll go go right ahead. I'll give you a few extra seconds. Okay, so um, once again, Davin Corona from Comunidad Presente. We're part of the uh, Human Right to Housing Collective here in Los Angeles. And uh, we're talking about today these code enforcement inspections that were done. Uh, just really quick before I lose my time, uh, thank you for actually even taking the time for putting these buildings to be inspected, but at the same time, our code inspection system is broken. Mm -hmm. uh, the managers, the housing the managers at LHD even say that themselves, that there aren't any 
needed teeth to force adequate repairs on landlords and that it would take a municipal code to be changed for that to happen while our units are just, you know, falling apart while, uh, in front of our eyes. Uh, so I just want to talk really quick about my, a building that was on this, that's on this list that was inspected. I was at that inspection and I was told by the housing department, the, the inspector that was there, I got the transcript and I also have the video for you all to see uh, if you all want a copy of that. Uh, I was basically told um, that they weren't going to cite for any new uh, complaints that had come up that day or anything that had been happening during the first time they visited to the second time they visited that they were there that day. And these are the, these are the pictures of what they allowed to be passed that day. Uh, I want to put them on public record. This is a shower that's falling apart. This is what was passed. This is what our city inspectors allow to be passed. And this is what they're giving a report saying 90, 90, nine months later that the conditions are okay and everything's fine. This is another ceiling caving in. And this is okay that they allow this to pass. Uh, there's over here uh, electrical outlets that are open. Uh, another ceiling that also just has nothing. And this is nothing but lead-based paint in here. We don't know what else is in there. Uh, these are building leaks and plumbing leaks that continuously happen. But yet, because our housing department doesn't see the leak that day, there isn't anything they can do about it. And, and the inspectors get frustrated, too, because I know we give them some high standards. And they have very low standards at the department. But I want to put all this for public record, and excuse me, along with the transcript of the interview I did with the inspector that said it's not LHD policy to cite for these things. So that's where I want to leave it. I don't have much time. And thank you. Can I, um, I look at those and then I'll go for back sure. to you. For sure. Because <laughs> to be honest with you, some of them I could see, some of them I couldn't. I no, need yeah, to, no, I get that. I and, need to break it. And if we had your vote, Mr. Wesson, I think I think we would pass RSL reform today. And here's the transcript. Okay, Alma. Uh -huh. Buenos dias. Oh, please tell me. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, mi nombre es Alma Salcido. My name is Alma Salcido. Trabajo para la Unión de Vecinos from in Unión Boyle Heights. Y soy miembro también de la colectiva por uh, derechos humanos. I'm also a member of the L Los Angeles uh, Right to Housing Collective. Y a lo que me quiero referir hoy el día de hoy es también a que las leyes no se están enforzando uh, como deben de ser. And what I want to refer to today is that the laws aren't being enforced as they should be. Y um, porque uh, queremos mejores inspecciones que estén en mejores condiciones en nuestras uh, viviendas. We would like better inspection process so that our housing uh, conditions can be improved. Uh, es por eso que estamos también proponiendo los inspectores comunitarios para que se enforce mejor también estas leyes. We would also like to propose that there's a community inspection process wherein community members uh, are along with inspectors on these inspections. Con relación a las SCAP, um, inspecciones de SCAP, and I'm talking about step in inspections. Uh, puedo referirme a un edificio que tenemos, es el 405 en la calle Soto. I would like to talk about one building in particular, 405 Soto Street. Y este edificio se encuentra um, en um, denominado substandard. This uh, building is found in substandard conditions. Y me pregunto, si las inspecciones se hicieran bien y si no se hicieran estos Mickey Mouses, and I asked myself, if there were actually good inspections and Mickey Mouse repairs weren't allowed to pass, estos edificios o estas casas no se irían a, a, a calidad subestándar porque se estarían haciendo buenas inspecciones y buenas reparaciones. And these buildings would not be allowed to fall into substandard conditions because there would be quality repairs and quality inspections. Y creo que desde ahí es donde empieza pues todo y quiero que se queremos enforzar esto con la ciudad principalmente y que hagan buenas buenas reparaciones. And I believe this is the root of the problem. We would like to have the city in, in, enforce good inspections and good repairs. Y este es uno, uno de, de los um, edificios. Mi compañera va a hablar aparte de otro más, de los muchos que tenemos. There's many, many buildings. This is just one of them, and my coworker is going to speak about another one. Okay, thank you. Thank you for thank translating you. as well. So, uh, Ms. Cuadros? Yes. Oh, and we're joined by Councilman uh, Tony Cardenas, so we now have a quorum. Buenos días. Good morning. Mi nombre es Laura Cuadros. Soy de Unión de Vecinos y parte de la colectiva por el derecho humano a la vivienda. My name is Laura 
cuadros en parte de la Unión de Vecinos y el Los Angeles Housing Rights Collective. Um, básicamente quiero referirme al informe que dio el Departamento de Vivienda después de nueve meses en relación a los edificios que solicitamos eh, que tuvieran reparaciones urgentes. Basically, I want to speak about the report that the Housing Department is going to give after nine months and about the building, uh, buildings which were part of this process. El edificio al que me refiero es en el 600 uh, North Soap Street en Los Ángeles. The building which I'm speaking about is at 600 North Soto Street in Los Angeles. Eh, en el reporte dice que el edificio ha tenido todas las reparaciones completas y que eh, se hicieron un escape case que se cerró en el mayo del 2009. And the report it says that the escape case was closed on, in May of 2009 and that all of the repairs were completed. Y que en abril del 2010 se cerró una, eh, una inspección en relación a liqueos que hay de los techos. And that in April 2010 there was uh, an inspection due to leaky ceilings that was also closed. Eh, yo estuve ayer en el edificio y lamentablemente siguen habiendo malas condiciones en él. I was at the building yesterday and unfortunately there continues to be bad conditions there. Referirme a dos apartamentos eh, básicamente en donde eh, una en la carpeta está totalmente dañada y no ha sido reparada. I'd like to speak about a couple of units, one in particular where the carpet is completely damaged and torn and hasn't been repaired. El apartamento 207 donde además eh, nuevamente hay un hoyo en la pared porque obviamente fue mal reparado. In apartment 207, there's a new hole in the ceiling because it was not properly repaired. Uh, otra cosa que sucedió que eh, dice que el, el caso fue cerrado en, en mayo del 2009 y en 2010 y sin embargo recién hace dos meses se reparó un techo que estaba a punto de caer encima del, en el dormitorio donde duerme la familia. And although this case was closed in May of 2009, just two months ago, there was a new case opened because the ceiling and the bedroom of one of the families was at the point of collapse. Y eso es básicamente por lo cual estamos pidiendo take, take reparaciones, eh, o sea, estándares en la calidad de las reparaciones. And this is basically why we're asking for standard repairs, for, for better standards for, re, for quality repairs. Y algo que ayudaría mucho en el proceso de inspección sería que hubieran inspectores comunitarios que pudieran facilitar este proceso. And I think something that would help so much in this inspection process is that there were community inspectors that could help facilitate the process para que puedan hablar con los inquilinos, hablarles de sus derechos, abrir las puertas a los inspectores que muchas veces no pueden acceder a las unidades por falta de por el tema del idioma, so that they could speak to the tenants, so that they could give them confidence, so that they could be there to help open the doors to the inspectors, so the inspectors would have access to all the units. Y del mismo modo ayudaría mucho que inspectores bilingües fueran edificios donde se sabe que hay que hay este personas que no hablan necesariamente el inglés. And it would be so helpful if there were bilingual inspectors who were present at buildings where it's known that that it's uh, families that don't necessarily speak English. Otra demanda porque los edificios continúan llenos de cucarachas y ratones. And another issue is that so many buildings that we see continue uh, as being just full with cockroaches and rats and mice. Porque el Departamento de Vivienda no está obligado a, a este, en, en tomar estos temas. Eso pertenece al Departamento de Salud que pertenece al condado. Estamos pidiendo que el Departamento de Vivienda tenga inspectores de salud que puedan enfocarse en temas de salud en los edificios en Los Ángeles. And this is because the Los Angeles Housing Department does not focus or does not have jurisdiction over health issues. It would be so helpful if there were health, actually health inspectors or people that could perform health inspections within the Los Angeles Housing Department. Okay, muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you. I've just been joined, we've just been joined by Council Member Jan Perry. Do you want to go back over? In a minute. Okay. Where is this at? What is this, a walkway? That's the uh, basement where there's about 100 cats living and they're known to be the manager's cats. Wow. And, uh, it's just really, it's bad and foul down that, That's Okay. No, no. Okay. Now, uh, no, hey, I mean, it just kind of caught me. Uh, no, no, Hamey? Is she back? No, she didn't make it. Okay. Joe Thomas, Deborah Burton. And I, I don't know if I can. A.S. Cariaga. Okay. Joe, you're first. Or Mr. Thomas, you're first. All right. Good morning. My name is Joseph Thomas, and I'm also a member of the house in Los Angeles. Uh, housing Collective, and like many other people that was here, 
at the Nate Holden building nine months ago when it was expressed that um, it was urgency and I can't compile why urgency would be nine months. Uh, in our area we had Rosalind and we also had the Haywood and because of our getting out in the streets, organizing and going through different levels, yes we were met but not in the stream of nine months do when you said uh, when the people said we would, we would treat this with urgency and it's still nine months and it's not been treated. Uh, the codes are not being answered. I feel that we are being shellacked on the surface, but the finer points underneath, you know, are not being met. The tenants are not being served. The finer points are not looked at. It's just like putting on a Revlon, you know, picture in the morning and just making it look good and that appeases the media and our people out here that evidently they don't know what's going on except those of us to live in these buildings and have to put up with it and we have to go in and out every day. I know it's a lot of council members that want to help here but they don't live down here. It's us that lives down here. We experienced this. Take a walk sometime. Take a walk through the buildings, and then you'll see just exactly what I mean. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Ms. Bur Burden? Yes. Uh, my name is Deborah Burden. I'm also a member of the Housing Collective. The system is broken. We know this, that a lot of people are living in substandard conditions. The city of Los Angeles created this inspector the code enforcement department because people have been living in substandard buildings and they're still living in substandard conditions. That's the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But if it's broken, it needs to be fixed. We know that a lot of folks are still living in substandard condition. They're waiting nine months for the condition to be inspected. We need a process more efficient to uh, address those urgency urgent conditions and not having people to wait nine months. Life is born in nine months and life is taken away in nine months. You shouldn't have to wait for some, wait to die to have some changes in your living conditions. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Burden. Uh, Mr. Cariaga? A.J. Cariaga. I'm a member of uh, Unión de Vecinos. I got involved with uh, cleaning up the neighborhood when I noticed that there was a lot of gunslinging and drugs in my neighborhood. Uh, my landlord started mocking RSO and LAPD at a point where um, I figured that n uh, n we didn't see any urgency, a response with urgency from uh, LA Housing or uh, LAPD on this matters. Uh, we did have approximately seven or eight um, buildings vacated because of gunslinging and uh, drugs. It got to the point where I wound up in the hospital. Um, I got assaulted. And um, it seems to me like the landlord himself hired the thugs to get it done. Uh, nothing has been done yet by LAPD. Nobody has been arrested. And I'm still going through uh, physical therapy on this. And uh, I like to see that some urgency be put into violence in the buildings, enforcement of some kind that... Uh, we eliminate people that uh, are committing crimes. People did die in that neighborhood, quite a few of them, uh, in the last four years that I was there. I was forced out. I've now relocated. And uh, I've heard that people are still looking for me. Uh, this landlord needs to be dealt with. Uh, he violated a lot of uh, RSO, and he didn't appreciate my telling him about it or that I was a member of Union de Vecinos. So we need somebody to put some bite into RSO. That um, there's a communication between RSO and uh, LAPD. LAPD came back at me telling me, Mr. Cariaga, what is it that you want us to do? I told him, hey, you're the cops. And uh, even up to now, I've gone through the victims, and they've told me to go ahead and come, come see you guys, you know, because... Uh, it seems like uh, their hands are tied. They don't know what to do about it. I still have yet to get me a police report out of them, out of LAPD, uh, Hollenbeck. Okay. 
Okay. All right, thank you. Sorry, thank you. Okay, Phyllis Doherty and Bill Huey. <coughs> Good morning, Councilman. I'm Phyllis Stority, and I am a landlord, and I want to tell you that um, I have had some very, very strict uh, enforcement officers uh, doing code enforcement, and uh, they haven't missed a thing. The problems have basically been with the tenants. Uh, I have tenants that have consistently removed the batteries from the smoke detectors. This is the second time in a row that I've had to get after them, and that's the only reason that these uh, code enforcement came back before. They change locks on doors so that you cannot get into rooms if you if you want to give notice and say I'd like to come in and just look and see if we need some kind of anything we need done there are extra locks put on doors you cannot get them to take them off because it's the bedroom or it's what for whatever reason you can't get there until code enforcement gets there and also hoarding things in there they bring things in and leave things and you tell them you have got to clean this place out you're going to have mice you're going to have bugs and you don't have any and you, you cannot enforce that yourself. I'm delighted to see the officers there because when they come in, the code enforcement officers come in, they demand that the tenants do the right thing. So it's very often as fast as we fix things, there's a problem because it's re, uh, re-damaged. As far as violence, yes, do anything you can to stop the violence, please, because we're having way too many shootings, and they certainly aren't caused by the landlords. One other thing on the cats. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I've been opposing uh, having this limit changed, because this limit change would allow adult, five adult animals and all the kittens you want. There is no limit on this, and this is what happens. The cats go different places. They have uh, kittens under these apartment houses. It is not sanitary. It is not right, and that should be taken care of. But um, this is a problem that it has to be addressed specifically, not by code enforcement, but by but you demanding that animal control have the right to go out and take care of these situations. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, Councilman. Uh, good morning, members of the LA City Council. I'm Bill Huey. I'm the president of Fair Housing Coalition. We're a landlord group, and we believe in fairness for landlords and renters. Now, I own a small three-unit building. I got put in reap over cosmetic issues. I live in the building, and I, I do the plumbing, the electric, all the serious stuff. And they came around, and uh, when the first inspection happened, they gave me a seven-page report of violations. You know, the doorknob is scratched. I mean, just cosmetic. So in good faith, I approached the housing department, and I got a meeting with upper middle management, and I said, look, I got two contractors who came in, and each one gave me a bid of about 20 grand. There were about $300 difference in the two bids. I said, I'm willing to do all that, but because of rent control laws, I'm collecting $401 for one bedroom. I would like to be able to raise the rent $200 so I can pay the loan off in five years because the banking industry, when you do a commercial building improvement, they will only give you five years to pay it off. That's the standard in the banking industry. So I said, let, let me sign an agreement. Let me raise the rent 200 after the repairs are done, and I'll have everything beautiful in 60 days. They said, no, we don't work like that. You do all the repairs, and we decide how much you're going to raise the rent. We might let you raise it a dollar, or we might let you raise it up to $55. And I said, well, then I'm in a negative, because I've... I, I'm supporting people I'm not related to would behoove me to sell my building and get out of L.A. That's exactly what's happening. There are landlords all over L.A. who own the older buildings who have said, we can't stand business. So they're selling their buildings to developers who are tearing the buildings down, and the low-income people are becoming homeless. This is affecting the renters. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is the inspectors won't cite destructive renters. I had a renter who had propane tanks in the living room. He wouldn't write a report. This puts other renters at risk when people have flammables or they bring crime into a building. There has to be a balance, you know. It's not that we hate renters. That they're our customers. There has to be fairness for both sides. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank and I would be glad to submit a proposal with all the, my ideas because this could this could – make more affordable housing available to more people. Right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, if there's no objection on item five, we will uh, receive and file the housing department's report. Uh, let's see, Mr. Cardenas or Ms. Perry, do you have uh, concerns about any of the other items? Okay, then, uh, yes, Mr. Alicorn. Uh, could we just have a response uh, from the housing department on the uh, 
testimony uh, regarding the officer saying that uh, even if they see uh, a violation, they will not uh, report it unless it's uh, previously reported. Oh, so, yeah, come forward. Is, is Army Council Members, I'm <coughs> Domingo well, is that the, with the, uh, the policy of the department? Well, <clears throat> no, the, uh, if we uh, approach a building we've inspected it before, and we uh, see additional violations, we will cite the violations. We have to do it in a different order, though, because that order is uh, part of our uh, systems, our computer systems. So when we go back, we have to enter it <clears throat> to a new order, and we'll add a new order. However, I think the I, biggest... I, I, Okay, um, so was the officer correct when he said that? That we do not include these new violations? Right. No. I don't believe that Has that there is been follow-up to that? We always go back. Has there been follow-up to that particular case? I, I couldn't exactly tell which particular case. Could you case. follow up on that? I sure will. And, and, and let me know what happened, uh, because if, if it's almost as if a police officer is investigating a crime and somebody pulls out a gun across the street I uh, and they say well no we're not here doing that because we're dealing with this crime over here I mean that doesn't make any sense at all you're absolutely right when we see additional violations we will include them but we will have a uh, uh, we'll issue a new order on that particular property but with the same violations so on <clears> this <throat> particular property were violations cited the new violations I believe they were, yes. We, what we do is we go out there and we issue the, uh, the original order. But there was testimony that they weren't cited. On that particular address? Yeah. Uh, I'll have to look at the particular address. I'm sh not sure which address that was. You don't have a document? But you, just, a document said, right you just said you believe it was cited. The the yeah, that's the policy that we have. If we go out yeah. there and... It's, it's, it's the yeah, it's two... What is it? Two I don't have it. The policy is to address all violations, whether we've been there before uh, and we see new violations. Well, Inspector Harrison, unless this document is incorrect, mm -hmm. and I don't take it at face value, but it says, uh, I will not be adding anything to the inspection that will require me to return, not for anything that was added. Okay. In, the, in, in this particular case, I'm going to have to look at the exact uh, wording of the order. But there are some violations that we cannot include in our orders, and those are particularly uh, uh, health violations. For example, we go out there and we, we cite uh, code violations, electrical, plumbing, <coughs> holes so in the wall. The where there's no ceiling in the bathroom. Well, no, those particular violations, uh, we have, I, can't, I can't for any reason understand why an inspector would not cite that. Yeah. We would have to cite that. That, was, that yeah. is definitely a code violation that we would cite. Well, number one, if you could, if you could send somebody to that site or go yourself. Um, but number two, sure. I'd like you to ask uh, Inspector Harrison what, what happened. Absolutely, yes, sir. And, and report back to us. Yeah. Uh, however, in those particular cases, and I did see the photographs, uh, there's no reason or, or uh, no case where an inspector would not cite that violation. If you were to see an open uh, hole in the wall or in the ceiling or any type of uh, other de such deficiency. I was going to mention, though, however, that there are some violations that we cannot cite because we do not have the authority, and those are health issues like roaches and bed bugs, uh, mold. Uh, and there are, there are some cases where... Can you refer it? Yes, we do. We automatically refer it. We come back. Well, and I'd like to know if, if the case with the cats was referred to the health department. We refer any of those types of violations to the health department and uh, animal services. If, uh, if, well, if you can include in your report on that particular site uh, what happened. Absolutely. Yes. Because, I mean, the testimony was that they were there, the inspector didn't cite it, and it's still in that condition. Yeah. So I, I really would like to get a report yeah. back on that. We do have a, a strict policy of making referrals to all the other agencies, whether it's uh, health or fire or, uh, or animal service. Is there somebody that this organization can work with directly when they run into an inspector who uh, they believe is not... Uh, yes, sir. As a matter of fact, we, we've met with... the policy. Yes, sir. Sorry. As a matter of fact, we've met with, this or, with uh, these uh, ladies and gentlemen in the past, and what we have done is we've uh, implemented a system where we have one particular manager, uh, one source of, uh, of information that we... one contact point. That's Inspector Daniels, Senior Inspector Daniel Snyder. And they refer all cases uh, to him, and he calls them on a monthly basis. As a matter of fact, we hadn't heard from them for about a year and a half until we found out that uh, their contact had moved somewhere else. 
But we're constantly trying to find out if there are any issues that they have with us, and we try to go out there as often as we can. We do have a policy of uh, uh, returning uh, our, at the inspection to the inspection site if there's a complaint within 72 hours. We have a 92 percent uh, compliance with that particular policy. Okay. So we do respond to those complaints. Okay. Well, if you could just get back to us on that particular. On the issue with the cats, right? No, no. It's it's one address. It's. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, yes, sir. 2913 South Flower Street. I sure will. And the inspection was 7 1 uh, 2010. I see it. Yeah, why not? You can give them Thank the pictures. You. Okay. In fact, you know what, uh, Mr. Alicorn? In fact, Mr. Cardin is going to ask the, the question. Wasn't it like a hundred years ago that the city also did? The health inspections. And why, why, why are you asking me? No, because you and I have been around this. <laughs> we've been around this block a while, but I, I could have swore there was a point where the, the, you know, the county just did the unincorporated area, and then somehow we did. You know, yeah, the health department actually used to have their offices here in City Hall. Really? Uh, south. Oh, wow. The ground floor. If you go down to the ground floor, you'll notice that the facilities are all uh, designed for. Was it a hundred years ago? Well, maybe not. <laughs> when Richard first started. Well, it's been a while. But yes, absolutely. Yeah, it used to be the uh, county building right there, and okay. the city used to run them. All right. Okay. Then again, on that item, we'll receive and file the housing uh, department's report. And on the other items, uh, th there'll be a uh, unanimous vote of all uh, members. So those items will be deemed approved. You want to say something, Mr. City Attorney? You grabbing for the mic? Hmm. Okay, uh, Miss Perry, mm -hmm. you were uh, in Denver for a little while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did the the owner of the Denver Broncos call you? Is that why they fired the uh, the no. coach? No, you had no, you had nothing not to do me. with that. No, he did not. Call okay. Me. Is there any more business before this committee? No, sir. This committee is adjourned. I just found it. I mean, you would.